Hey, this is Kyle from Pure Storage, and today we're going to walk through a demonstration of using Active Cluster uh, with VMware Cloud Foundation fiber channel backed workload domains. Um, so, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our ESXi hosts are set to the ESXi personality that we're going to be using for setting up this workload domain. Um, and then the next step is to create a pod um, between the two arrays that we'll be using for Active Cluster. Um, pod is built. Now we're moving in the additional array. Give it a second to come online. And now we will add a volume that is inside of this pod. And we'll make it 10 terabytes. Okay, that volume has been created. Now we're going to go ahead and connect uh, host groups to this volume uh, on both sides of the pod. So here's our second array. Um, there we can see our pod and our stretched volume. And then we'll go ahead and connect our host group on this side. This will just be a uniform uh, host group that will be connected. Um, from that, we'll jump over to our first ESXi host. And we actually do need to add uh, the new 10 terabyte volume data store to this. And then rescan our other two ESXi hosts as well so that this active cluster fiber channel volume appears on each of them uh, before we kick off our workload domain creation. Okay, so here we're just going to do VMFS6. And let's go ahead and create our uh, VCF-AC volume. Takes it just a second. Uh, we'll go ahead and wait for it. There, our data store has been created. We can see it. Um, I'll skip ahead now, but you would want to go to your other two ESXi hosts and rescan for that volume and make sure that it's there. Um, now we'll go over to the SDDC Manager dashboard and we'll actually start to set up our workload domain with the VMFS on FC option. I'll quickly fill this out. I don't want to bore you guys with this, but we'll just call this a uh, Pure Edge. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and uh, set up our workload domain. Um, here's our vCenter instance. So all this stuff has already been set up in DNS for forward and reverse lookup. Uh, that is the IP address and the FQDN for vCenter. Um, as well as our NSXT uh, network, which is what we'll be backing this. Yeah, we'll, we'll speed this up a little bit just to kind of quickly copy and paste in all of our information and credentials and FQDNs needed to set up this environment. NSXV is also an option, um, but I get the sense that VMware is moving towards NSXT, which is uh, what we will use in this example. And here we're setting up our NSXT managers. And last but not least, of course, providing a password to NSXT. So on this next screen, we'll actually see our VCF AC data store. And those are the three hosts that we set up in the earlier steps. I'll pause here because I can't expose my licenses to you guys. Um, and here we see object names that are ready for review. And then we kick off the workload domain deployment. Um, workload domain deployments can typically take about 45 minutes to a little over an hour, depending on number of hosts and if NSXT already exists. So um, I'll go ahead and take a pause here because I don't think you guys need to see every single step involved in setting up a FC workload domain. Um, so yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and pause it. Uh, actually, now let's take it off pause, and here we can see our new workload domain has been created. Um, and here, let's actually look at our VCF-AC data store, so act AC for Active Cluster. And since we're using the Pure Storage Web Client plug HTML5 plugin, uh, here we can see that on this data store summary screen, this uh, volume is indeed stretched between those two arrays, and there's the pod that we built earlier that it is a member of. Um, and now this workload domain is up and running, so we can feel free to move stuff onto it, either from our management domain or create new VMs on top of it. Thanks a lot for watching the demo, and we'll see you again next time.